Hi, gang. I'm my radar meteorologist, Matthew Capucci. At least seven people are dead and three dozen injured following a devastating chain reaction crash in Illinois. The disaster happened Monday afternoon about 20 miles south of Springfield, or roughly 75 miles north of St. Louis on Interstate 55. Thanks to blowing dust, visibility is abruptly plummeted to barely 100 feet on a road with speed limits of 70 miles per hour. By the time many people slammed their brakes on, it was simply too late. Now, I've been inside a dust storm before in Lubbock, Texas, back on June 5, 2019. A wall of dust kicked up by thunderstorm exhaust swept in from the west, transforming day to night. That bronze shroud came in with 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts, and when it hits, it hits. What happened Monday in Illinois wasn't a dust storm in my mind. It was an unfortunate and tragic instance of blowing dust, and it happened on a very local level. For starters, there were no big hulking thunderstorms to collapse and kick up dust. In fact, it didn't even rain. If we look at the observations from nearby Taylorsville, we see visibilities never drop below seven miles at that sensor. That means there was no widespread dust storm. Whatever happened was extremely localized. But now notice this, westerly winds gusting 35 to 44 miles per hour for hours on end. That would have been enough to lot the top layer of soil. That means the wind was certainly sufficient for blowing dust, but was there actually dust to blow around? That would depend on how dry the ground was. Truth be told, there's not even a drought going on there right now. They've seen plenty of rainfall. But per NASA Sport LIS program data, the top 10 centimeters, so roughly four inches of soil, was extremely dry over a small area west of Interstate 55. That was all it took. So my guess is that there were probably just one or two fields that were especially dusty, and crosswinds carried that dust across the roadway with unfortunate results. Consider that it's only May 1st, and many fields haven't been planted yet. Christian County, Illinois is known for corn and soybeans. Corn may have been planted by now, but isn't tall enough or deeply rooted enough to hold onto that topsoil yet. The expression is knee-high by July, so the fields can lose dust easily right now because we have another couple months to go. Same thing for soybeans. The harvest is usually late September into October, and planting is just getting underway. So a single barren field could theoretically genuinely have this much of an impact, especially if a farmer hadn't planted yet and wasn't irrigating the soil. So again, nothing to hold that down. I've driven through similar environments in the Texas Panhandle back in May last year, and I can tell you firsthand how scary it is when visibility drops to nothing. The National Weather Service urges folks to, quote, pull aside and stay alive during episodes like this, because that's all you can do in these sorts of environments. Shortly after the wreck, the National Weather Service in Lincoln, Illinois issued a blowing dust warning. Similar conditions prompted the issuance of a dust storm warning on Tuesday, once again forcing the closure of Interstate 55. The dust storm warning is one of roughly 10 weather alerts that triggers the wireless emergency alert system, causing your phone to buzz. Snow squall warnings, tsunami warnings, and tornado warnings do the same thing. Now with this setup, several days of strong west and northwest winds occurred on the backside of a stagnant low pressure system that was anchored over the Great Lakes in western New England. You can see that low spinning on satellite, picking up dust. These sorts of blowing dust episodes can happen with some regularity during the late spring and autumn, especially on the backside of sprawling low pressure systems. Here is an example from satellite on December 5th, 2021. That was the same day Nebraska and Iowa got an extreme derecho with 90 to 100 mile per hour winds and 100 plus tornadoes. Here's another shot from April 10, 2019, showing blowing dust in eastern New Mexico and western Texas. Now, blowing dust is separate from a dust storm. Dust storms, aka haboobs, accompany thunderstorm outflow or exhaust. We can sometimes see that cold air exhaust line on radar imagery. They're most common over the desert southwest, i.e. Arizona, sometimes New Mexico, and they can happen there a few times a year. Larger sand storms, which occur in a broader level, can form in Australia, Africa, and Asia, particularly inner China. China's Gobi Desert is known for its sandstorms. Interestingly, sandstorms are even known to help carry some diseases. Microorganisms, including bacteria and fungi, can accompany the dust. Meningitis outbreaks in Sub-Saharan Africa and even Caribbean coral reef decline have been linked to African sandstorms. Stateside, the worst sand and dust outbreaks on record were seen back in the 1930s. Between 1935 and 1938, the Dust Bowl, or a years-long drought and blowing dust episode, stemmed from over-farming and lack of moisture. 100 million square miles of the high plains were affected, and crop loss totaled nearly half a billion dollars per day during the height of the episode back in 1936. During one dust storm in 1935, dust made it all the way to Chicago, and the snow that fell in New England was tinged brownish red. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.
Download MyRadar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox and Windows.